How I Overcame Shyness, 100 Celebrities Share Their Secrets, compiled by Gary Simon. The purpose of How I Overcame Shyness is to empower others, especially children. In it are the answers that I've received and wrote to a notable people in the worlds of the entertainment, art, science, business, sports, and politics, asking how they overcame shyness and for any advice that they can give to the reader. Some also explore the re rewards of shyness, because there are some. When I was very young, I thought it was only one. I was the only one. Then I saw children, some other children who were just like me. In my teens, I noticed an astonishing pattern. A lot of people, very famous people, were also shy. So what I found was telling Barbara Walters on TV show is that they had experienced the same thing and they're still experiencing it now and then they even read Barbara Walters had experienced it herself that it that I'm speaking of is shyness if Elvis if Elvis up close in words of those who knew him well and knew him best family and friends revealed that as a child Elvis was as shy as he had been the fascination with me was that the performances in the years ahead, Elvis would be in some embodied to was the thesis of shy in show. And when you have the women come to a stage for kisses and hugs with the act of a shy person, was this an act of a shy person? Despite being overly shy, he was able to perform stage like nobody else. I wonder if it was the shyness itself that what made him to be a performer or how he overcame it. Or did the shyness spark an artistic impulse that ironically propelled him forward, forcing him to overcome the obstacle that also inspired him? Even though I can't ask Elvis how he overcame his shyness i can ask others most people tell children that they grow up out of their shyness even michael jordan recently told newsweek that he was he was insecure as an adolescent in this book i include advice from him and others who face the challenge and head on in my preteen and teen years i was deeply shy when i began in this book i was in the early 20s and i thought i'd had to describe myself and less so i was still quite shy today at 27 today at age 27 i would describe myself as somewhat shy many people who don't know me from my childhood probably wouldn't know that I am shy. I was born shy. I remember being in a daycare where I was most of other kids were playing with another and I observed the pattern persistently for many, many years. As I grew older, I found that I could be an outgoing classroom in the classroom because I've gotten absorbed with what we studied. But as a personal level, I remained very shy. I thrived on achieving because I improved my self-confidence, but it also in small improvements, it lessened the shyness I felt in social situations. Nevertheless, at 23, I was growing impatient. I began to write to celebrities to find out how they developed their self-confidence because if people may have the thought as, as me as shy, the shyness was still impediment in social life in spite also being a great gateway to satisfying creative and intellectual life. I had to read an Esquire and see on ABC's news that how David Copperfield conquered some of his shyness with magic. At around the same time, an article appeared recounting the poignant and deeply affected television interview with the British dramatist Dennis Potter. His brilliant teleplays in British television, The Singing Detective and Pennies from Heaven, had emotionally moved the previous viewings. Viewings. Now a man had envisioned them with deeply ill and wanted to reveal himself to television viewers, was affected to be mostly one of the honest and heartfelt way to spoke about shyness and courage, of facing his illness and his own, his own with his family and friends. I also couldn't help to wonder if his shyness that he had afflicted also played a role in creating the insight found in his creative works. The actor Terrence Stamp told Premier that he had gotten into acting because he was extremely shy. He didn't seem so anymore. Why? Yet motivation to become a reporter to get informed when Gene Hackman suggested Premier that what happens to you as an actor is you gain a certain amount of poise and then people discern that as acting. The countless articles and interviews over the years, celebrities diverse of Johnny Carson, Sally Field, Dennis Robin, Michael Stipe, David Letterman, Carol Burnett, Richard Gere, Uma Thurman, Alicia Silverstone, among others in creative fields, told interviews how they were shut and they were shy and they were gravely and ravely in the details about how they helped overcome it and live with it. One thing that the entertainment magazine books and movies did reveal was that people such as Jane Fonda, Marlon Brando, Bob Dylan were doing yoga and meditation to relax their center themselves and saw that like quality and prayer, they realized it too. I soon tried a yoga meditation and found that being excellent replied to my idea filled a racing mind. Yoga put me into a state of not thinking. It also has taught me to stand more poised and breathe in a full capacity of my lungs. Breathe the key to relaxation to future social situations. Keep your posture straight and keep take a deep breath. As many as you need until you fill out the block, you're speaking no longer an obstacle. An essential step to yoga meditation process for shy people is to wish yourself and others well and completion, for this is when the connection is to the mind is the greatest. I kept writing to people too, and I found that the shyness does not discriminate. It affects everyone, from actors to writers, politicians, playwriters, sports stars to CEO. Nobody's immune, but significantly I learned that shyness could be an asset well as a liberal to liability to overcome shyness is an asset yet a liability to overcome it's through the insights gathered in this book that i have conquered some of the, my shyness and accepted its rewards however hidden i'm not embarrassed to say that i am shy to be naturally shy means that one's body genetically disposed to being sensitive the body's pulse rate rises the body's rate rises like 
crazy around new people, places, situation. The mind fills with ideas and situation. And in these ideas, it prevents the shy person from interacting. I must and could physically feel a mental block when I wanted to speak. This sensitive reaction causes one to become caught up in ideas and thought. And I got absorbed in popular culture. I had to read many, many newspapers every day. I watched a lot of movies and read a lot of magazines in college and ability to focus acutely, which many shy people share, and able to absorb idea systems and write essays and terms paper that perfectly describe those ideas and my own theories about them. Becoming engrossed in this causes the brain to always be on. And in the mode of new ideas and vision power, vision flower, the side effects in my case was that pretty shy about the people on a personal level because my mind had hard time shutting down in the creative center to make a room for social interaction. The side effect is that in my case, it was pretty... I was pretty shy with people on a personal level because my because my mind had a hard time shutting down its creative center to make room for social interaction. My biggest problem with shyness, which remains to me to today, is introducing myself to others. I hope that outgoing people as a result of learning my shy people from this book will take upon themselves to make to help shy people integrate into social situations, especially early in life. I certainly hope that outgoing folks can get past what often looks like an aloofness or a lack of interest displayed by shy people. How I Overcome Shyness contains almost exclusive original material sent by my kind contributors. However, they are suggested to be contributors, and when I thought that we were particularly useful to my leaders, I've included just a few selections from the books of other media. Gary Simon, August 1998. Heather Whitestone, McCollum, Miss America 1995. The true meaning of success is measured by how much difference you make in other people's lives. Do not have to be in the spotlight or have to be powered to... You don't have to be in the spotlight or have the power to touch other people. Just be yourself and open your heart to other people. People will see the real you and believe in your dreams when they remember your good heart forever. And they will remember your good heart forever. Sister Wendy Beckett, nun of arts commentator. Sister Wendy Beckett. Sister Wendy Beckett. I don't think that we need to have self-confidence. Certainly I never do. I often always feel I've, as I've done badly. But we need to be confident in God who made you and understand, who made us and understands all about us. If we try, and even if we fail, it doesn't matter. God supports us, makes our weakness strong. I don't think we need to have self-confidence. Certainly, we just have to have confidence in God, who makes us and understands all about us. And even if we try or even if we fail, it doesn't matter. God supports us and makes, us, makes our weakness strong. Mills Lane, Judge and Boxing Referee. There's nothing wrong with being shy, no matter how disposition. Set goals and approach the task with dignity and honesty. Be persistent and always to do your best. As I like to say, always remember, hands up, chin down, and keep going forward. Lennox Lewis, the boxer. You can be anybody. Do anything. Just go after it. It's in everybody's heart. Just go for the punch every time. John Voigt, the actor. One day, about eight years ago, I was speaking to a high school class about my career and sharing some things that I'd learned, and a question and an answer period followed my talk. A boy raised his hand and shyly asked me about... Had had I become so poised? The question startled me at first. One, because it's such a great question, and not as a movie actor question, such as pertinent questions of all young people, and two, focused because of two years prior to talk, I had gone through a real search for balance. And when this question was raised, I realized that somehow it come through quite a lot. What I said to the young man was with my poise was natural result of feeling good about myself. I told him that it wasn't always so with me. I had to find a face within myself the things I disliked. I've also had great effort to forgive myself and replace bad habits with good ones. Over time, I've somewhat developed a schedule activity that I felt was full of good thought and service to others. And because of it, I grew to feel much better about myself. That formula I spoke to the child about so many years ago still seems to be me, to be the very best way to acquire poise. Bill Keen, cartoonist. Always be yourself. There's no one in the world exactly like you. You're one of a kind, so be yourself. Dan Jensen, Olympic athlete. Be yourself. Have confidence in yourself and your abilities. Believe in what you can do and do anything you want. As well as anyone else, the hard work of self-confidence is never giving up. Sometimes failures can make you a better person in the long run. Don't be afraid of failure. Linda Berry, cartoonist and author. If you are shy, it means you are a great noticer of things and people because you are scared of things and people of new situations. You have to notice everything about them in order to keep yourself alert because being shy feels like you're being in constant danger, which is awful. But the one good thing about being a great noticer of things and people, what artists and writers, great reporters and filmmakers and songwriters are, is where do you think and most where do you think it mostly comes from? From hard, dangerous early days that usually turn out to have been worth it, really worth it. Keep your eyes and ears and mind always open. Even if you can't make the right words come instantly out of your mouth, and as much as you possibly try to make things, because things are made by shy people or a lot of times are the most useful. Gay Talese, journalist and author. When I was in high school, Ocean City, New Jersey High, I was very curious, very shy, and 
The way I could and I did indulge my curiosity most effectively was in my job and in my school newspaper. Journalism is ideally suited for people who are both curious and shy. It affords such individuals a license, an example press card, to intrude into other people's privacy, to ask questions, to expect answers, and even to question that in any other circumstance with an integrating or a bop on the nose. Don't think about you can teach curiosity in journalism schools. I don't think you could teach curiosity in journalism schools. Curious people are advised to attend journalism school and go to work on newspapers and magazines, which is what I did. Even though I never was interested in journalism as a full-time career, indeed it never cut to be journalism, I do not consider myself having been a journalist in a full sense. Because perhaps in definition of news, it was never traditionally an editor's definition of news. The editor about what was happening now, this moment, today, whereas I didn't give much a damn about what was happening today, unless I thought it would be equally interesting tomorrow or next year. The books I read and still read mostly are fiction, and yet I say above, journalism was means of which I could satisfy my curiosity about other people, a means of approaching them and asking them about themselves. How do you get through the night? How did they succeed? How do you get through the night? Why did you think they fell short? How did they go to the next? What are, what are you going to do next? Are you happy with the individual? Are you happy with the individual they think they are? Et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. What, what time is it? What year is it? Where are we? Where are we all doing here? What time is it? What year is it? Where are we? What are what are we all doing here? Gary Collins, actor and television host. I've always been shy. I think of the most reasons I've gravitated towards a career in performing arts was just to find a way to express myself. I found that assuming another identity, another character, more or less allowed me to become more free. Ultimately led to being more comfortable about being myself. A talk show host, Gary Collins. Graham Kerr, cooking expert. Humility, I am told, being known for who you are. Pride, vanity, ambition often prompt people to pretend that they are like their idols. They copy hairstyles, clothes, speech, even moral behavior, and in the end, they don't even know who they are, let alone how to know how unique, how, how, as a unique individual. To be shy is to consider oneself to a real account, yet in a personal worthwhile. I'm more the one you get to know the real you. I'm interested in the real you. That's how I've tried to live out my whole life to succeed because I'm simply free to be me. So I'm grateful that I don't need to pretend. Brett Butler, comedian and actress. Brett Butler, comedian and actress. Sometimes I wish I was a little more shy, but I suppose that a lot of my life I relate to shy people and envy them at times because I suspect that they might be in better listeners than someone like me. When I was younger, I thought I was being shy, but I turned out I was usually scared of something or I didn't think that I had the right to express an opinion. It took a long time for me to feel like I did to have interpersonal rights. When I speak to somebody who's shy, I let them know that I am interested in what they have to say. This is good for both of us because we're up doing what is not second nature to us. I listen, they talk, I like, like many performers... I'm self-absorbed and actively seeking places to do what I enjoy doing and what I'm good at, and I have to be careful that it doesn't infringe on the communications of others. We moved a lot, and when I was a child, I was always there in the new kid in class. I was always a new kid in class, and that to the woes of adolescence, you have the making of a very shy person. I looked out because I have a mother who is courteous and kind, and those who go out of her way to make people feel good about themselves. She certainly treated her children that way, and then when she disagreed with, even when she disagreed with us, she convinced me that things are as interesting. That she convinced me that the thing that interested me were worthwhile, valid, and important. Things that interest you should be worthwhile, valid, and important. I have no children of my own, but I try to treat others that way, and it is validating to care about the interests of others. I frankly believe that the only thing that sets us apart from animals, that and going to comedy clubs, I try to smile at strangers and take the extra moment to anyone I might, say, I might think would be shy. This isn't as unselfish as it may sound. I do it because they often have something to teach me. Recently, an interview asked me if I was afraid when I stand up comedy. I said, sometimes, but it's not as frightening as not doing it. Clifford Stoll, computer expert in authors. Yep, I was shy. Still am. There's nothing wrong with it. Sure, it gets you in the way of meeting people. It gets in the way of meeting people, but shyness also keeps you out of some types of trouble. A great way to retain shyness and avoid, developments, uh, and, and avoid developing social skills is to spend a lot of time on computer networks. Every hour, you're right online with 60 minutes of avoiding real people. Patrick F. McManus, humorist. I'm not sure whether I am shy, but I have attention focused on my groups. People it tends to me very uneasy. Speaking groups has always been a source of terror for me, and avoid whether it's possible, and I'd avoid it. Still, I have managed to give thousands of lectures to students and also hundreds of speeches to various groups. The terror is still there, though particularly in few moments before I have to step up on the microphone, and once I get the first laugh, then I'm all right. Years ago, I attended a lecture on a renowned scholar from whom known well. In private, he was an exuberated, self-confident, and admired him. I admired him greatly. So I was surprised to see him visibly shaken up when he stood up to give a lecture to 
in front of a small group. Nevertheless, his lecture was one of the best I've ever heard. Think of as a great scholar at his lecture, delivering with his voice quivering from fright. Every time I would give a speech, I figured that if Henry could do it, so can I. What I learned from him was there is no disgrace of being shy or afraid. Only allowing it to prevent you from doing it is what you need to do. Only allowing it to prevent you from doing what you need to do is what you need to be afraid of. Bob Villa, fix-it specialist and television host. Bob Villa, would you believe it that I'm not sh that I'm still shy? I am still shy. The best way to get around it is to learn to smile naturally and without any hang-ups. Henry Louis Gates, Jr., Afro-American Studies professor, Harvard University and actor. I remain a somewhat shy person, though few people might see or be hard to be able to believe that. But once I was actually an intensely shy, chronically shy, I overcame my shyness by learning how to write effectively, then memorizing essentially ways to communicate and act in a given situation. I also came to realize that everyone must learn how to act, how to behave, how to communicate effectively. No one is born knowing how to compare himself or herself in a given social situation or comport himself or herself in a given social situation. Once I realized this, I was enormously relieved. Not only was I not alone in my shyness, I was in fact just a typical human being. David Gutterson, novelist. I never really had much confidence in myself. I started writing and when I wrote, things uh, felt better. I was at peace with myself and instead of struggling to be to something else, I wasn't even that it wasn't meant to be at some fundamental level i just knew that i was doing one thing in the world that i was cut to do i never doubted it for myself and from then on i had really chosen writing writing hasn't chosen me i haven't really chosen writing writing chose me you can know the particular work is your destiny you develop certain things about it and about yourself Jane Alexander, actress and former chairwoman of the National Endowment for the Arts. I took my cue from Eleanor Roosevelt. I read that she, in an effort to overcome her shyness, when Franklin Roosevelt became a public speak official, decided to accept every public speaking engagement asked about asked of her. By doing so, she forced herself to overcome fear and lack of confidence. I did the same thing when I was in my 30s. Experience is the best teacher. Experience is the best teacher. Over time, I became relaxed, speaking to groups, and more easygoing with people generally. Jackie Collins, novelist. To wake up in the morning and be at peace with yourself. To do something you love, and to always be true to yourself. LeVar Burton, actor-author. I truly believe in our thoughts, that our thoughts influence what we experience in life. Do yourself a favor and spend at least one moment a day thinking of the world as a safe, healthy, and wonderful place to be. Dwayne Hickman, actor and television executive. I have been shy since I was a kid. With an older outgoing brother who taunted me and stage mother who tried to push me into show business, I spent most of my childhood trying to keep a low profile. It seems odd that Shy Kid would suddenly be co-starring on TV with an outgoing Bob Cummings, but that what happened was is I landed a role as Bob's nephew, Chuck McDonald, and Bob's Cummings show during the five years ran of the show. I discovered talents I never really thought that I had. Soon my confidence was building and my work was being noticed. Then I auditioned for Many Loves of Dobie Gillis. I wasn't really nervous then because I felt I knew I would, what I was doing. For anyone who's shy, just concentrate on your God-given talents. Don't try to be anyone but yourself and you will gain confidence and succeed to, un, to whatever you undertake. Tom Arnold, actor. If you have a dream, go for it. No matter what anyone else says, go for the dream. You don't always succeed, but at least you've tried, so we have nothing to regret. Will Shorts, editor, New York Times Crossword Puzzles. Playing games, I think, is one of the best ways to overcome shyness because it allows you to socialize with other people in a strictly defined, non-threatening way. Once you've comforted being about yourself in a game, that's the first step to being comfortable with yourself in any situation. Jim Nabors, actor-singer. We're all shy at one time or another. I guess the key is to pretend that you're not. William Manchester. We always learn from our defeats, never from our victories. R. David Thomas, senior chairman of the board and founder of Wendy's International. Getting over shyness, number one. Don't think too much about what other people think about you. One of the reasons why people are shy is that they don't want to take risks. They don't want to be rejected by someone else. It's more important that you like yourself than everybody in the world would like you. So don't worry much about what other people think about you. If you don't take any chances, you'll never be able to really make friends with anybody. Number two. Find somebody to do, find something to do that gets you around people. For me, it was getting into the restaurant business. For other sports, maybe a 4-H or the Scouts. The key thing is to spend more time with other people. Once you do, the shyness will melt away. Number three, make friends one at a time. Some people try to become really social overnight. That just doesn't work. The best way to get over being shy is to build your friendships one at a time. Number four, look for the people who think like you do. Over time, you want to be comfortable with all kinds of people, some who agree with you, some who don't. But in general, you're better off starting out to make friends with people who share views with you who are really different. But in general, you're better off starting out to make friends with people who share your views than with people who really have different views. Number five, get in touch with feelings that cause you to be shy. 
Do you think that people think you act or looked funny or look funny? Are you afraid of people? Are you afraid that people don't think that you're good enough to be a friend? Are you afraid that you'll stumble around and sound dumb when you talk? If you can put a finger on exactly what you're afraid of, what exactly makes you shy, you can start to do something about it and find out that your fear isn't really so scary after all. Sometimes I still clutch up before a heavy-duty public experience. When President Bush asked me, a national spokesperson, to do exposed to be the spokesperson for adoption works for everyone the campaign that meant i had to do some comments to the washington press corps this was a great honor and when i saw the 20 microphones and the 50 people did i sweat did i get over the fear i just made myself believe that i was talking to one or two of my closest friends and everything was a breeze it's easy to get over shyness if you muster the courage and take a little risk at a time when you do this you'll be surprised how many people out there really want to be your friend H. Wayne Huizenga, CEO, Republic, Industri Republic Industries. There's no better way to build self-confidence than by trying and doing. Even if you fail occasionally, some of the most famous people in the world didn't succeed at everything that they tried. But what set them apart is that they never quit trying. They never lost confidence in themselves and in their abilities. They learned from their mistakes. They preserved and they succeeded. Achieving confidence in yourself is more rewarding than when you reach a level of comfort and assurance through your own actions. Once you demonstrate confidence in yourself, you've taken a necessary step in convincing others to have confidence in you, your ideas, and your potential. Powell Anderson, novelist. Shyness, doubtless, has a number of different causes, even within the same person. However, I think the important one thing, feeling of helpless awkwardness, is not knowing what to do or say will interest or please someone else. This fear is often well-founded, since the excessively shy individual doesn't interact enough to develop these social skills he or she can be or to do by meeting other people who can share some strong interests such as particular hobbies or kind literature then there will certainly be something to talk about and a shy individual will feel more confident in having something to offer gradually this confidence can extend towards people in general dr earl mendel author and professor of nutrition pacific west university the secret of success is enthusiasm effort and endurance enthusiasm effort and endurance is the secret to to success sprinkle enthusiasm over everything you do make an effort to do the best job possible in any of your endeavors and never give up endurance and stick to your arm it's imperative you stick to it it's imperative that you want to be successful you can continue to be on top set your goal each week rid your mind of companions and negativity be positive and follow the three e formula enthusiasm efforts endurance Hank Williams Jr., singer, I believe that all of us have our own shyness at times. Self-confidence is the key to overcoming shyness. If you believe in yourself, that's the main key to success. Lenny Wilkins, NBA coach, Atlanta Hawks, coach, Olympic dream team, Lenny Wilkins. Young people who want to control their future are people who make a difference in their lives that should arm themselves with all the power that knowledge gives. And the only way to do that is through education. Through education, they can deal with the challenges of the future. Phil Graham, U.S. Senator. When I believe that something I'm doing is important and right, I'm not easily dissuaded. I'm not afraid of being alone on an issue, and I don't like to lose. And when I get into a battle, I fight hard. I don't get discouraged, and I don't give up. I learned from my mother, knee that the way to succeed is to start sooner, work harder, and know more than anybody else. And I try to follow that edge. Again, is to start sooner, work harder, and know more than anybody else. And try to follow the adage, losing is a habit, and so is winning. I don't accept defeat as final. Only death is final, and even then I hope to reprieve. Merle Haggard, musician-songwriter. I think confidence comes from a trial of error. When you eliminate the biggest part of your ladder, your confidence level goes up. And then there are two kinds of confidence. Number one, most important, is confidence in one's specialties. And number two is confidence in oneself as a person. It takes a lifetime of input from all the who you love, of all some sort of suffering and mistreatment from others along the way, to keep your chin up. Those of you who are shy, understand. Perseverance is your answer. Richard Nelson Boles, minister and author of What Color Is Your Parachute? How I overcame shyness. Well, actually, I never have. I will die shy. I was born shy. It didn't help matters. I've contracted pneumonia in days before antibiotics. I was five at the time I missed a year ago of school. When I returned, I was hopelessly behind this and, of course, made my shyness even worse. I stayed shy throughout my easy childhood and adolescence. Used to cross the street and I saw someone coming towards me. In order to avoid having to meet their eyes or say hello in college, I always walked with my head down, eyes focused on the sidewalk. One day a friend asked me I did this. I gave a flip answer to... I'm looking for nickels. Well, he said, you'll never find a friend. You'll, you'll never find any friends down there. He said, this came to me like a voice from God. I decided to mend my ways as best I could, and went into counseling for four and a half years. For four 
and a half years in order to overcome my shyness. Counseling didn't even touch my shyness, but it did change my attitude. It decided to regard my shyness as my friend. Think of all bad places and kept me out of it. I never gone to bars too shy. I never gone to sexual misadventures too shy. I never gotten mixed up with bad company too shy. Obviously, in many ways, shyness was actually a friend. I also decided that while I couldn't get rid of my shyness, I could. I could do what I had to do with my life despite the shyness. It was rather like having a new car and finding out that I couldn't completely release the brake lever. lever. Deciding I'd drive anything anyway, even in the brakes dragging it out, I asked myself what I felt God wanted me to do with my life. The first answer came to me is when I went to church as a college student and discovered my many churches were closest due to shortage of the ministry. I decided to offer myself to the ministry. Even though I meant giving up in front of my people every Sunday, even in the between Sundays, I decided to the God to help them do that despite my shyness. And so after finishing college in the seminary, I became an Escobar, an Episcopar minister, which I still am. And I learned to get to speak out in front of 100, 500, 2,000, 6,000 people as I have to do so many times in my life. Over the years, God has used me in spite of my shyness. Maybe even because of it, I have become well-known author and shy prefer writing and meeting, writing to meet pe meeting people. Over 5 million readers, I've also become a teacher and international reputation. I've also become my teaching, telling people that I am shy, but I do my best to overcome it, and I'm teaching them. Many people afterwards to tell them how much the confession helped them. And so my conclusion is this. Do what you were put into this world to do, never letting your shyness stop you, and putting you and yourself into the hands of God. And do remember that many bad roots... Many bad roads your shyness saves you from going down. Your shyness is truly your friend. Wendy Kaufman, Snapple spokesperson. Self-confidence is a quality that needs to be nurtured and constantly. I derive my self-confidence from setting goals for myself, then following through. I say what I mean, and I mean what I say, which, take, which makes me honest and gives me personal and professional integrity. To have personal and professional integrity, you say what you mean, and you mean what you say. Whether or not your outcome and what you'd like to be, all experiences lead to growth and they let them. Finally, the self-esteem in this country happens to be at the all-time low. People are just too critical and judgmental of themselves and each other. I personally hold Madison Avenue advertising responsible of this condition. My last thought is this. You don't have to look great to be great. Beauty really is an inner quality. Terrence McNally, playwriter. Look to your friends. If you have bright, caring, and good people in your life, it means you're doing something right and the rest will follow. If you're surrounded by hypocrites and jerks, Back to the drawing board with your life. We really do to get by with little help from your friends. We really do get by with a little help from our friends. William Wegman, photographer. I was once very shy, and when I had to give up a speech for my hands trembled and I perspired. Instead of worrying about it, one day I said, My hands tremble, so what? I made an attribute. I made it in a tribute. The most thing that happened to people was to be sympathetic. Well, not long after the realization, I stopped trembling and became more secure, perhaps even more overconfident. Richard Karn, actor. <laughs> The first time I went on stage, I was in third grade. I remember standing in backstage with my heart beating and thinking to myself, I can't just, I could just walk away. It's my choice. And with that thought, and with that thought, I walked on, on stage and never looked back. And I have since never learned the secret to overcoming shyness, fright, or life is to be prepared. To know what you're going to do and let inspiration take over. Know what you're going to do and let inspiration take over. You must remember that you do not have to be better than anyone else, but you must be better than ever, than ever thoughts that you could be. You must be better than you ever thought you could be. If you could do this 100% of the time, no one can ever ask more of you. You must remember that you don't have to be better than anybody else, but you must be better than you, mu than you thought you could be. You must be better than you thought you could be. And if you could do this 100% of the time, no one will ever ask more of you. James Burroughs, director. I was a shy child. I had a famous father. I gained confidence by not being afraid to try. Even if I failed, if you never try, you will always be shy. Terrence Gilliam, actor, director, illustrator. Make certain that you were born incredibly talented, rich, and beautiful. If you fail, is this... If you fail in this, become a Hindu. Live a good life. Kill yourself and hope to be reincarnated as above. Make certain that you are born incredibly talented, rich, and beautiful. Kilpatrick Sale, author in Luditi. Everyone is shy. It is an inborn modesty to make us able to live in harmony with other creatures and our fellows. Achievement comes from not denying shyness, but occasionally by setting aside and letting pride and perspiration come first. Bob Schieffer, journalist, CBS News. Self-confidence. Like many things, it can be learned through practice. It begins to putting yourself in the right frame of mind. When I first started in television, it was nervous as an ad-lib situation where there was no script. And one day, I began to plan out my mind. It could do and everything was wrong at once. The teleprompter broke. The transmission line from another correspondent. I was supposed to be talking and went down. And when there was nothing for me to do but just stand there and ad-lib until everything was back up in order, then I said to myself, 
I hope everything goes wrong, so I'll have a chance to prove that I can do it. And once I began to hope for the worst and saw that as a challenge rather to do something to fear, it became a game to me, and my fear disappeared. And remember, just believe that you can do it if you work hard and realize that you'll make some mistakes, but that's only natural. There's no perfect humans. Turn your, into your best efforts. Once you've completed your assignment, move to the next one. Just keep looking forward. Spend a little time as possible looking back. And one day you'll realize that the things that used to scare you don't even bother you at all. Lou Ann Johnson, teacher and author. When I was very young, I was so tether-hearted that I could I could cry for hours if somebody called me a name. I would even cry the neighborhood children tormenting some other child because I knew how much it hurt. Then at age 19, I joined Navy and learned the real meaning of the word torment. I was also learning the most important lesson in my life is people will treat you as a victim as long as you allow them to. When I realized that sailors, sailor, sailors would continue to tease me and taunt me as long as I responded as they expected me to by blushing and protesting, I stopped letting them control my behavior. This realization changed my life I did not become hard or boisterous I simply became aware of my own inner strength at age 28 I earned honors in leadership US Marine Corps office candidate school because I understood that self-confidence is a matter of perception 99% of people who meet me today will probably describe me as a tough cookie I'm still tender-hearted and basically shy but not many people are perceptive enough to notice Heather McAdams cartoonist can I can a person be shy or insecure when they're alone I really don't think so. I most always occurs in public, which leads me to the conclusion that shyness has everything to do with the worry and fear of what other people think. Well, as well the feelings of self-doubt. I'm not interested, talkative, funny, you name it enough. I'm not interesting, talkative, funny, you name it enough. It separates a person who is labeled him or herself as a shy or accepted the label from someone else. From people they come in contact with, the feeling of being separated or different combined with desires to be somebody other than who we are smarter better joke teller etc it's a rocky place to it's a rocky place to operate from who cares about what other people think why do you care if you look outward at this kind of gratification it's always ending up on a scary old roller coaster with an uncertain base and nightmare goes up goes down enough of making anyone else scared shy or nervous insecure or all the other ego based negative things that make us uncomfortable to be natural and comfortable around others as well as to be alone is a high goal which comes only when you operate from a place higher than the ego a place where we accept this exactly as we stop desiring to be another way, a place to where there are no labels, and where love, curiosity, and compassion take the place of fear, self-doubt, and worry, most of all, a safe place inside ourselves is where we are always blissfully simple, and breathing, and even thankful to the answers that lie within each and every one of us, that if we just listen, I remember that when I was realizing I had a drinking problem, I went inward to discovering the incredible drama taking that I hadn't even noticed, I found one Heather who wanted to drink, and one who didn't, and then watching over the other battle it out, it became clear to me that I became one that could that could I become one without. So after this writing, my advice to shy people in going inward, meditate and love who you are. Popeye said the best. I am what I am. Edward Koch, judge, the People's Court attorney and former mayor of New York City. Edward Koch. For me, self-confidence comes as a result of two factors. One, experience and trial by error. Two, knowing something has to be done and there is no alternative. So go out and do it and do it right. Mort Walker, cartoonist. I've always considered myself a shy person. During my earlier years, I felt like a kid. A kid on the block when I joined the National Cartoonist Society after starting my own comic strip, Beetle Bailey. After a time, I grew increasingly more and more easy with my peers and colleagues, those who work in inspirationals to me. I work a lot harder with persistence, and it was still necessary to developing a successful and long-lasting comic feature. And confidence in my abilities helped me overcome the shyness I once had. Work hard and believe in what you try to do, and no one can judge you in a poor light. You will have convictions that ought to instill an assuring feeling from those that will grow confidence. Meet and enjoy people, and you will learn from each other. Lawrence Block, novelist. Shyness is just one of the form, is a form of self-centered fear. A shy person thinks he's the center of everybody's world when he actually is only the center of his own world. Remember that, contrary to what you believe, you are not a piece of crap the world revolves around. You face your fear and take the action. George Gilder, journalist and author. Become a reporter on available newspaper. Don't expect to be paid first. You'll be forced to confront people and ask questions, and you'll be amazed by their willing responses. Be a problem with your shyness. Your problems with shyness will disappear. Richard Dawson, television game show host and actor. If you love people, you will have a good life. If you reach beyond your own shyness or insecurity, it gives hope to somebody else. Tin Dally, Tin Dally actress. Depends on the day. Some days I come through myself, and I think I get from the outside world I think I get it from the outside world the worst can happen is failed in a day the next one or one after another is a new opportunity to believe in myself again so it depends on the day some days I don't come through for myself and and then I think I can't get it from the outside world the worst can happen is the th worst that can happen is a failed day and the next one the one after is a new opportunity to believe in yourself again 
Harold Prince, Broadway producer. John Steinbeck once said, "Is Where I look again and try to judge a future, I pick a tortured child, frantic and uncertain, he's unhappy in his limitations. I'm afraid I shared his childhood. It's not fun while you're growing up, but ultimately, it has to be compensating. Emmett Smith, NFL athlete, Dallas Cowboys. Seize life and the opportunities presented to you. Never let any obstacles like shyness or any other circumstances hold you back from making a touchdown in life. Although I've enjoyed successful careers in a professional football, I would tell you that it didn't have the size of the play in the game. Might have spent the life on the sidelines if I had not reached inside to find the power of my self-confidence to follow my dreams. David Barry, humorist. I developed self-confidence at age 13. When there was a major development in my life, my voice changed. Pepper Schwartz, professional, uh, professor of sociology, University of Washington, and author. Never be shy. I think my parents produced my drive by a combination of extreme love and impossible high standards. Of course, like all people, I can be shy on an occasion. Big crowds will do it. But I must say that I've been outgoing in a risk-taking people-loving person from early childhood. Tam, Tom Clancy. Only one way to develop self-confidence. The only way to develop confidence is do the things you find scary until they stop being scary. Dr. Jonathan Rhodes, surgeon. I think most, though not at all, people are shy as they emerge from childhood and uncertain about their reputation as adults. First, I found out about the 10th and the 11th grade that I had learned more about building radios and more about my classmates than I had. Second, learned about the 11th and 12th grade that I can often make people laugh and bring a humorous point of view to a conversation. So I cultivated this art to some degree. Later, varying degrees of academic success increased my confidence. And then between the ages of 27 and 32, I had a mentor who felt his research was in the cutting edge of progress. And some research guided me to do what also is breaking new grounds. He took the rather bold view of our work and important had some extent of able to induce the point of view in my own thinking and attitudes. Bob Kresham. Bob Keesham, Captain Kangaroo. Appreciate your uniqueness. Never in history has there been anyone exactly like you. Being one of a kind, you must be the best you possibly can be. Develop your own talents to the fullest. You can do anything you wish to do. The only limitations is your will. Make the most of what only one and make the most of the one and only you. Rabbi Harold Kushner, inspirational author. I suspect that the many of us start out shy, especially if we were firstborn child of inexperienced parents. I found the following useful in overcoming my shyness. Number one, reciting memorized material, poems like Casey at the Bat for the classrooms. That's the way I didn't worry about finding the right words that could count on the material to impress people. Number two, remembering that people to who I am, I was speaking to where we share with me, not to judge me. We were there just vulnerably to being judged as I was. Three, starting off a talk with a good joke and test any opening remarks to get off on a good start. Number four, letting experience convince me, and I was competing, competing with that. Things sometimes didn't go well. It was the audience's fault as well as much as mine. Adam West, actor. Try to do some things you don't want to do. Make the fear work for you. Fred Whipple. Astronomer, I developed my self-confidence on the basis of my accomplishments. At first, my grades in grammar school and winning cipher, ciphering Bs, my graduating school, I learned was I was able to do more than most of my peers. No problem from then on. You could learn. You could do more than your peers. F. Lee Bailey, attorney. One of the greatest things to gain self-confidence is to learn about different topics, to keep up with current events. If along with the learning, one makes a daily habit of expanding his or her vocabulary, he or she will soon have a conversation easy and will slowly come out of his or her shell. The metamorphosis, the metamorphosis will probably not happen overnight, but the determined individual, it will happen. Scott Turow, attorney and novelist. I think that shy children should understand that self-confident people are not confident as they look. Everyone has and suffers from a terrible doubts in themselves from time to time. Some of us more often than not. William Kellogg, meteorologist. Perhaps an individual is not best source of information, his or her problems with shyness, that it's obvious a subject at assessment. I, like everybody else, know that went through periods in my youth where I felt insecure and lacked confidence in my dealings with others. But as the time went on and my personal and professional career developed, I became more self-confident. Maybe I was lucky. I do not think that shyness has been a problem of my later life. Gloria Stanham, pr publisher of Miss Magazine. I am far more naturally confident, but I realize that Male dominant cultures direct the lack of confidence into women, even defining as a feminine. So the only way a woman can be sure that she will and her daughters can continuously have a battle with this sense of insecurity is to band together and work and erect an equal security. And that's what and that's what has and that has been my work. Rita Rudner, comedian. The way I grew out of my shyness was to become good at what I was doing by practicing for years and years. It gave me a degree of self-confidence. I used to use the technique of pretending that I wasn't shy. This helped enormously. Eventually, I forgot how exhibited I was. I used the technique of pretending that I wasn't shy. Douglas Copeland, novelist. I've never felt shy in my life. This is probably some sociopath, isotome, and autism. However, I'm around people I don't trust, and st I stop talking.
And when I meet somebody whose work I admire, I get sort of Wayne's World meets Alice Cooperish. I'm not worthy. I'm just usually the same way with everybody. Take it or leave it. Does this help you? I've never understood shyness. Most people are desperately lonely or too eager to come forth. Life's too short. Bio biographical note. I have three noisy brothers, so I had to learn quickly that if I want to be heard, you have to make noise. Denise Austin, fitness expert author. I believe exercise is one of the best ways to improve yourself because after a workout, you feel good inside. It's a great feeling of self-accomplishment. You overcome procrastination. You overcame procrastination. You did it. And that helps your self-confidence. J.A. Jantz, mystery novelist. According to a family legend, my mother and young married a woman. As a young, as a young married woman was so painfully shy that she was elected secretary of a small Grange bank back in South Dakota, of a small Grange bank in South Dakota. She was so petrified that she could barely function. With her father's help and courage to overcome shyness, her shyness, she had an outspoken 80. She had an outspoken 80. Her children and grandchildren had a hard time believing that her shyness ever existed. She had outspoken 80. Her children and grandchildren had a hard time believing that the shyness ever existed. Deciding that none of her seven children would be so afflicted, she became a small-town version of a stage mother. She saw that all of her kids performed at talent shows, plays, church choirs, contests, anything that forced us to get up and do performing. From a room of people, no, necessarily I liked it, but it was with practice we managed to hold our own. As an adult in the life insurance business, I availed myself as numerous improvements, kinds of programs, including Maxwell's Malt Cycle, Burnick's, Burnetics, Dale Carnegie Courses, First Novel and Thought of Sod would be a promotional trail. I spent a year in Toastmasters. I regarded all the activists. I regarded. I regard of all my activities as an essential element in the learning process that was made that made it possible for me to now feel comfortable and confident no matter where I am. I speak to groups of all kinds of sizes and ages: gyms, full high school students, book clubs, retirement homes. I talk to library patrons, civic groups. Sometimes I even get paid for it, and why not? Because my mother was shy and didn't want me and didn't want me following in her footsteps. Robert Stack, actor. To be shy is to be self-conscious. If you can focus your attention and interest on others away from yourself, you'll find that you don't even have to be shy. Finding interesting, constructive friends and share their friendships, become a joiner, not a loner, and you will see how fulfilling life can be. Gerard Suarez, Conductor Seattle Symphony. I believe very strongly that people can become confident through security with themselves because they know, and they know what they know or do to having had success. If you know that an artist you can play as an instrument exceptionally well, you will most likely not be confident in your performing. But also you lose many sense of introspect shyness, at least in performing as an instrument. There are many wonderful musicians who play in extremely extroverted, confidently ways before the public. But as, you, and as people, they may somewhat be shy. The shyness is obviously comes from the personal inherited and learning a trait of personal experience. It seems to me that shyness affects different areas of people's lives. One could be shy only in a family relationship or professional circles and depends upon whether one has success has, has had success in. The more success one has in various areas of one's life, the less shy one tends to be. Josie Bissett, actress. I think that everyone has a part of them that is shy. I believe that those who accept that part of themselves learn to conquer shyness. Neil Postman, professor of mass communications. New York Times University and author. When I was young, I was shy, mostly because extremely overweight. Sometimes being shy can be an advantage because a shy person will spend a lot of time observing a behavior of others, therefore can learn a great deal about human behavior. I think I did that, but nonetheless, I did not wish to be shy, so shy, so I discovered a way out of my situation. I found that I was a pretty good baseball and basketball player, and I would be better if I lost weight. I did it and gained some confidence, and in the process, I also discovered that I was great for the gift for writing. Teachers praised my writing and remember thinking that writing is something probably should I do with all my life, and I did have fun, and in a sum, I should say that everyone has an interest in the gift of something, and by pursuing the interest in a gift, one may find a release from excessive shyness. Stanley Spork in Federal Judge, self-confidence can only be attained when it is rightfully deserved. That means the person should dedicate himself or herself to an area that he or she is interested in and then should go about learning everything possible about that area. You can only become self-confident when you're truly conversant in the particular field or an in interest. Ed McMahon, Entertainer. I had those periods of shyness in my early years. I was able to overcome the feeling by perseverance and perseverance and some great advice from my father he told me son always walk into a room or a situation as though you belong there and people will believe that you do believe me this has worked wonders for my self-esteem i visited with presidents at their summer residences one-on-one -on -one situations i've conversed easily in high-standing members of the religious community and i've changed quips and jokes with high-profile celebrities and sports figures that idea of feeling like you belong you helped me immeasurably has helped me immeasurably 
Julian Bond, Chairman NAACP. I was a shy child. I think I'm still shy today. Nonetheless, I teach large classes, make speeches before large audiences, host television programs. I'm not shy about offering my opinions, even where I'm sure I'm not sure if I'm welcomed. Overcoming my childhood shyness occurred when I was a young adult. I turned 30 in 1960, the, and I entered the civil rights movement. In addition to getting arrested for the first time, difficult for a shy person, I became a spokesperson for the Atlanta Student Civil Rights Movement and later for the youth organization of the 60s Civil Rights Movement. The student of the Nonviolent Coordinator committee in the capacity I had to meet a brash journalist visiting firemen and curious to explain from what our goals and aims were and the tactics were I quickly realized that I knew more about what I was talking about than most of these audiences did and it gave me the confidence to move forward and, wo and go forward I've been going forward ever since David Brown movie producer stay with your dream I did that nothing or nobody dissuade you from your dreams come true to these dreams and believe strong enough in your dreams you're willing to work hard and if you're uninfluenced and you have to stay uninfluenced by negative thinking dr. Bernie S Siegel, health specialist and inspirational author. I have a loving God. I have a loving God. I have loving parents. I have a loving family. I practice being self-confident. I accepted the, mora the mortality and stopped worrying. And I have a role model. Lassie. Dick Martin, comedian. Shyness is not a bad thing. I you got to learn to love your shyness. It may be a gift. If you're really, really shy, however, do not enter a shark slapping contest. B.J. Thomas, singer. When I first started singing, I was very shy. I've always been shy as a kid. And when I started singing with the band, the shyness bondered, bordered on fear. After I had my first hit record in 1966, I was signed with Skeptic Records in New York City. At Skeptic, I became in contact with a great musician manager named Paul Contour, who and Dion Warwick's personal manager was. Paul advised me always to look people into my audiences directly in the eye. Up until that time, I would always look down over to the top of the audience. It was hard to do this at first, but now it's the most enjoyable thing to do and sing and entertain. Looking at people in the eyes keeps me in the moment, helps me make a real connection with the people, and helps me get rid of myself and the shyness of the stage. I told my fans that I love looking them in the eyes. One of my favorite things about me is I'll look you in the eye. Only some of them are shy also. Buddy Hackett, comedian. I'm here to be just as I am. Shyness will not equip my faults or upgrade my assets. Will William Gibson, novelist. I've been shy all my life. But I'm much less and less shy in many ways now at age 48. That is when I was younger. I think shyness contributed to being a writer, although I, could, I also I couldn't tell exactly how. I certainly contributed to my becoming a reader, and generally, people have to do that before they can become writers. I think the writer's block is often a symptom of shyness, a very annoying one. One way to get around it is to tell yourself that what you're writing isn't the real thing, but a trial version, or as Dave Stewart in Rhythmics once put it, fake it. Bill Mayer, comedian, the doorway to your dreams goes through your balls. Act like a person you want to be until you become that person. Robert E. Wise, film director, I think the key to self-confidence lies in being fully prepared in any situation that you are going to be faced with. Try to anticipate all aspects and aspects and situations so that you are prepared to deal with them when the time comes. My three P's of advice are passion for whatever the subject is, perseverance, and patience. David Caruso, actor. Don't get hooked on the illusion. Ann Miller, actress, entertainer. Use your power of mind. Don't say, maybe I can do it. Say, I will do it. Harold Good, actor. If you really love what you're doing and you're working at it, your work will be, your work will, work, you work like a slave. Yet it'll never seem like work. If you really love what you're working at, your work, you'll work like a slave. Yet it'll never seem like work. You'll never know what time has went. You never know as time has went. It won't matter if you don't make a lot of money. You'll learn that losing yourself in your work is one of the best ways to find yourself. You really, you'll learn that if you really, really love what you're working at, you'll work like a slave, and yet it'll never seem like work. You'll never know where time went. You'll know, you'll, even if it doesn't make you a lot of money, you'll learn that losing yourself in your work is one of the best ways to find yourself. Joan Van Ark, actress. I just finished doing Stardust, a two-character original play in Los Angeles, an hour and 20 minutes on stage, nonstop, no intermission. Every night before my first entrance in a blackout, at the beginning of the play, I would read and touch these words, which I had written on a big white card and instructions to myself. I think they apply here and now as well. Breathe. Be brave. Be naked and open. Don't flinch. And most of all, don't think too much. Just do it. Monty Hall, actor, television, game show host, Monty Hall. 
My shyness developed as a youngster when I moved from the suburb to another and beat the rent. In strange surroundings, in a reluctant to the race of his voice volunteer or to be visible, one of my teen years I developed a talent for music and drama. I found a release to a pen of desires. Thus acting, singing, and writing opened up a new world for me. It didn't matter what the smallest kid in the cast was. Talent knows no size. I grew, I performed, I gained confidence. And everyone can be powerful, halfback and home run hitter. Know somewhere in your arsenal that you have something that is distinctly yours. Let it out and it will not be shy any longer scott glenn actor i've never considered shyness a weakness allow it to lead you into a concentration and a concentration will always defeat fear ray romano comedian and actor i found i found that in my experiences in field stand-up comedy and acting my best performances have come at times when i was feeling at least confident constantly wondering am i good enough did i do this right should i do this this is a nervous energy that can make these performances inspired and unique there's a certain shyness in every great performer. It is what leads them into a field that begins with self-doubt, shyness, lack of confidence. They are all ingredients for greatness. Never to be satisfied and always trying to get better. Of course, is to be confident. Know your talent in any area and life is needed an asset for success. What drives me in my constant need to get better is in questioning it. The bizarre way I never really quite am satisfied. Yet all at the same time, I love trying to get there. Eileen Douglas, actress. The best advice I ever got came from a director, Gus Van Sant. He wrote in the back of a picture that he had painted... Be your own flying saucer and rescue yourself, which has always meant to me that we're all afraid, but if we pretend not to be, eventually we'll become more confident. I also believe in failing, because the more you fail, the less afraid you become of failing. Robert Shapiro, attorney. It was the smallest. I was the smallest member of my junior high school graduate class. Because of my size, I felt inferior. It was a good. I wasn't good as an athlete, too small to compete. I turned my attention to study, so I'm the best student I could be. And I always worked and studied hard. And as I grew, so did my self-esteem. And I know I was doing the best I could, and the confidence grew, and I never looked back. I learned to like myself, and then others liked me. Bill Macy, actor. I told jokes because I wanted to make people laugh. And to get just the right laugh, I told them over and over again. They laughed, and to my surprise, I got more and more of what I bargained for, the continuous repetition repetition of experimental made me self-confident grow with my leaps and bounds al lewis actor find something you absolutely love to do and go along the way get to the love the way you do it find something you absolutely love to do and along the way get to love the way you do it imagination is more important than knowledge mario cuomo former governor of new york the best way for me to describe my experiences with this anecdote my mother and father came from another part of the world my father was a ditch digger a ladder that he ran in mama and papa grocery store we didn't have much money and neither one of my parents could read or write in italian much less speak english sometimes after i became governor my old elementary school sent me copies of my first grade report card it was nothing special about it except i was absent so much over the thirty-eight days of the whole year so i acted when my mother stayed home why did i stay home so many days was i sick she told me no you were afraid you couldn't speak the language and that made you afraid it was true in fact i was well in school high school before i felt completely confident with english and in the end of my public school teachers who made me all the difference because they didn't lose patience to mock me or being too slow then and gradually I began to achieve and began to demand a lot of myself and taught me the best lessons is to demand a lot of myself demanding a lot of yourself and the more you do it the better it works and of that in the end there was your confidence comes from feeling of that and that does matter and other people think because you are aimed high and gave everything that you were capable of giving Sri Shimoy Sri Shinmoy writer artist and philosopher when we see a little child who's extremely shy we feel that the child is very cute. Unfortunately, from a spiritual point of view, shyness is not a good quality at all. When you exhibit shyness and outward pretend, well, what you not and inward try to draw its world's admiration and attention, shyness is only a clever way of achieving something instead of giving something natural and normal to the world. You try to attract attention by becoming abnormal. Some things die in themselves. They do not create other feelings. But shyness is not like that. Shyness does not end in shyness. From shyness comes sulkiness. And after sulkiness is the kind of destructive quality it comes. A strongly feeling is the more encouraging children to be shy, the slower their progress becomes. Shyness is something that must be overcome if a child is to be spontaneous, free, and natural. And they have there to be loved by all in all sundry the opinion of mine is founded upon my personal observations made while dealing with my students all over the world i may be thousands of miles from reality but i'm against shyness sometimes i'm against shyness kind of majorly Michael Jordan, NBA athlete, Chicago Bulls. I never looked at the consequences of missing a big shot. Why? Because when you think about the consequences, you always think of the negative result. And I'm going up to the jump of the pool of water, even if I ever can't swim. I'm going to jump into a pool of water. Even though I can't swim, I'm thinking about being able to swim at least enough to survive. I'm not jumping in thinking to myself, thinking I can't. 
thinking I can swim or maybe I'll drown. If I jump into any situation, I'm thinking I'm going to be successful. I'm not thinking about what happens if I fail, but I can see how people get frozen in their own failure. To get to the peers are just thinking about the possibilities of a negative result. They might be afraid of looking bad or being embarrassed. That's not good enough for me. I realized that I was going to achieve anything in life. I had to be aggressive. I had to get out there and go for it. I don't believe you can achieve anything by being passive. I know fear is an obstacle for someone and some people, but it's an illusion to me. Once I'm in there, I'm not thinking about anything except what I'm trying to accomplish. Any fear or any illusion. You think something is standing in your way, but nothing is really there. What is there? An opportunity to do your best to gain and gain some success. I can't stop trying. I can't accept not trying. By Michael Jordan. Charlton Heston, actor. Charlton Heston. Thought a long sense to a public person. Though I've long since learned to be a public person whom I can step inside instantly and retain a certain shyness I've known all my life. Maybe it was my back moods, Michigan boyhood, or my parents' divorce. And also possible I'm a loner because I'm an actor. Or any other way around, whichever the actor you're giving is somebody else. He's not performing to you. You're watching him and another man, a character. With many actors, it may be someone very like them, even in the same guy every time, but pretending to be this guy. In my case, it's often a real historical figure, a far better man than myself. But even when I play fiction character, it's not for me. It's a cardinal and a cowboy or a quarterback. I get to be him, not me. Dennis Potter, dramatist novelist. As a child, I know for a fact that I was a coward, physical coward, and I was a really crippling, shy person. I hate situations, new people, and almost it was a dread. To those consequences of your adult life, you really create serious wrong impressions of yourself to yourself and to other people because you try to compensate that you lead to aggression and reverse of shy, arrogance, if, if you like. Because you wear, it like a, you wear it like a cloak, but you let it drop and find out that, in fact, the last, thank God, you're not actually a coward. Remember... Afterward, remember that it may not be in your best interest to lose your shyness completely. You may be able to utilize the positive powers of shyness in schoolwork. Many other people I wrote suggested have tried to do it. A note on medication. Some books suggest using medication to help shy people. Occasionally, people use medication from must perform or give a speech. I believe the medication should be a last resort. And the only reason a person should remain severely shy after childhood medication, both effects of the benefits from people deriving from shyness, also carry unwanted side effects. Some suggested, resi some suggested resources to be looked into. But how I overcame shyness. A hundred celebrities shared their secrets.